All right, Rocket Football Nation, we're going to pack up the bus, drive down to Hickman, Kentucky, Fulton County. Coach Thompson, it's kind of like coming to Marion if you're not from here. It, you just can't hardly get there. You go to Fulton. My wife always gets confused. Now, which one is this? It's, yeah. it's the one where you go to McDonald's and take a ride and keep going for a ways. <laughs> I'm happy you told me because i got to get us there. you got, you got to drive the bus. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, this is going to be an interesting football game. It's one we've had circled on the calendar all year, clearly. Uh, we come into this game, both teams are 5-2. and two. Uh, Both uh, We are 1-0 and oh in the district uh, play, and Fulton County is 0-1 oh in district play. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a team that thinks they're prime time now, I mean, yeah. uh, from everything I read, and they have certainly have a prime time player. For sure. But uh, you got to prove it. Yeah, for sure, and, and Russellville's still a good team. They that's who they lost to, um, and, and you know Russellville ends up coming back on them in in that game last week or two weeks ago, excuse me, and, and showing that they're still one of the premier teams in our district. Um, Fulton County is a very explosive team, especially offensively. Um, so we're gonna have to go out and play. We're gonna, have, you know. <laughs> we have to bring our A game. And, and if you look at the RPI ratings, uh, that's something that, that we've been talking a lot about this year uh, in the RPI. Right now we're ranked number 12 in the RPI. Fulton County is uh, number 14, so they're right behind us. Uh, if you look at the Associated Press poll, which is the longest, uh, uh, most uh, traditional, probably best respected poll, I would say, out there, uh, Crittenden County, this week we moved up a little bit. We're still not back in that top 10, but we're at 11, and Fulton County is down at 15 in that one. Yeah. Or 16. And, you know, the rankings really don't mean anything outside of the RPI. You know, I know that you, you yeah, know, we like to talk, really about, talk yeah. about it, but, you know, there's just a lot of, when you look at, especially like you look at the RPI where Russellville beats Fulton County uh, two weeks ago, and they're still so far down. Um and, the, and, and that's how rankings work. Just because you beat a team doesn't mean you're going to jump a team. But at the same time, what I'm, my point is, is it really doesn't mean anything because the games are, are played regardless of the ranking. And you got to go out and win. Mm -hmm. um, so um, we got, I think we got tripped up this year looking at rankings and, and really, uh, you know, made our season tur turn left a little bit. And, and now we're getting back on track and we're not really worried about it. Yeah. We don't care where we're at. And, and, it, and we're better for it, so um, that's the mentality we're going to keep. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll take that cue, we're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to come back, and all we're going to talk about are rankings and possible pairings in the playoffs. <laughs> it's going to be your playoff primer coming up next. You know, ever since I was a child, I've loved land. I loved every land. My mother's father was a farmer, so that my granddaddy and his father was a farmer, and I spent my childhoods... Uh, summers and coming to Kentucky and working on the farm and, and everything from the smell of dirt to feeling it run the dirt go between your fingers I just there's there's nothing like it cash back please 25 cents I need to cash this please 25 cents cash back please 25 cents Hunter why are you shortchanging the customers at this window all you get is a quarterback Play. Is that a point your speed option? Are you looking for a banking option? Sequence, double party in. Come Coming to Marion soon! All right, Coach Thompson, what we're going to do now is talk a little bit about what's going to happen in the postseason. We're three football games away from getting into the postseason. Uh, I know you don't like to jump ahead, but, but we're just going to talk about scenarios and what ifs. And This is a new playoff system this year. For the first time ever, a district championship is not going to be crowned from the regular season. It's going to be crowned in the playoffs, just kind of like basketball is yeah, done. It's more like basketball, exactly what it is. Right. Um, until, until you get to that third round, and we'll talk about that in a second. But the first two rounds, we play in our district. Yeah, so the regular season district games are, are seeding games. So you're playing for home field advantage, or, or you're playing for to play. If you're the one seed, you're playing to play that four. Right. If you went out, um, you play the four seed, uh, which, which typically means that your path um, is easier. Um, so you want to win them all for positioning. Um, and then first round of the playoffs would be one and four and two and three within your district. So it's like the district tournament in basketball right. um, that happens at the end of the season. 
And we'll, in our district will be Russellville, Fulton County, Crittenden County, and Coverna. Yes. And if we win down at Fulton County this week, mm -hmm. we, we guarantee ourselves a home field advantage. For sure. For sure. Um, yes, because we'd be the two or the one right. regardless of what happens. Um, so that's what we're playing for, um, is to, to continue to be able to come and play at Crittenden County um, the first two rounds of the playoffs, and then also to get the, the third straight district championship for Crittenden County. Um, and that's the goal. You know, every year that's one of the top goals that kids have is to, to get a district championship. Um, and then from there, um, this is what changes that third round um, is where the RPI kicks in. And, and so basically the third round would be RPI on the western half of the state. Yes, it's split into half. The yeah. eastern side, the top, the, the, or on, on the west, the districts one through four will play. Mm -hmm. And then in the east, districts five through eight will play based on your RPI. Mm -hmm. so, so a regional, there will basically be two regional champions crowned in that quarterfinal round uh, of the playoffs, if you will, and but now that round is based on your RPI. So we we could play a team from the fourth district up in Louisville. You know, right now I think if you look at the RPI, it, it's pro, it projects us to play Kentucky Country Day, yeah, who who is number uh, one or one right now in the RPI. Definitely on the western side. Uh, yeah, <laughs> number one period RPI They're, wise, but and Pikeville, sure. which yeah. as we said is is a maybe the top team in the state is number two right now. And Kentucky Country Day still has got to play uh, some of these other teams, uh, yeah. you know, before before we they close their year out with Campbellsville. Mm -hmm. um, so they, they had some tough games, but, you know, you go win those games and uh -huh. it's going to boost that number. So. And Campbellsville this week plays uh, Bethlehem, so we'll get a good gauge. Campbellsville's been a little surprised maybe in the, what, what, they're not winning as much and their RPI is below ours, but... Uh, certainly a quality football team. Oh, for sure. They have arguably one of the best players in Class A on their team, so they have a chance any given week. Um, they just they have two losses right now. And we said earlier in the year on the show, you know, you got to win in this system. Wins sure. wins takes care of everything. And, and you look at Kentucky Country Day and Pike yeah. are both 7-0. So, mm -hmm. All right, and they're winning games that they should, and they're also winning some good quality games as well. Right. So, um, we got to win. We got to win. Yeah, you know, and, and we don't ever want to look back, but, you know, if we were if we were sitting there at 7-0, at uh, we'd probably have a high ranking too. Yeah. And, and, you know, again, the rankings really don't matter, but they will matter as far as seedings, yeah, and that's only sure. the RPI, not the AP. I know it's, it's confusing to a lot of people that don't follow this every day. I've had a lot of questions about that, especially – the last week or so as we get closer to the playoffs. But just remember, the first two rounds will be in our district against our district teams that we're playing right now. We will play those first two games in our district. We're going to take a quick break, and we're going to come right back and talk about Fulton County's football team. Hey, Kelly, it's almost Friday. And we'll see you at Rocket Stadium. From our team to yours, we're behind you all the way, Rockets. Par 4 Plastics, where people make the difference. Hi, I'm Darren Tabor, Homestead Ox Realty. Let us get you across the goal line with a new home. You go to the game this week, you're going style, Rocket fans. Come by Max 2, Custom Tent and Detail for a $15 war. Hello, I'm Rick Hughes at Deer Lakes Golf Course in Salem, Kentucky. Home of Rocket Golfers. The Rockets are going to go down to Fulton County this week and play the Pilots. They're 5-2. and two. They're a team we've beaten 16 straight times, Coach Thompson. Yeah. Uh, the most consecutive wins against any team that we play, but we can't take this team lightly. There have been some, uh, you know, we upset them in 1985 when they were uh, the number one team in the state of Kentucky. But then we went back down there in 1988 when we were a ranked team, and, uh, and they were – very much unheralded, and they beat us 28-21. to uh, And we had a really good football team that year. Yeah. Uh, so you just never know. Yeah, you don't. And, you know, they're a really good football team, but we're a really good football team as well. 
Um, they, they'll have a very explosive player on the field named Caleb Kimball, and he's a, he wears number three. He's running back form, plays some defense at safety, um, and he's just a guy that you don't want to let the ball get in his hands because he's explosive. He can take it. Um, the distance any play, but he's also the focal point of their offense. So, um, 1,283 yards rushing, number one rusher in Class A football. Yeah, and, and he's and he's deserving of the title of the top running back as far as what he's done. Um, he's just explosive, you know. Um, it, honestly, he's very similar to Xander um, as far as hitting a hole and, and getting downhill right now. Um, he's just had more opportunities than X has had this year, um, but he's their guy. Um, they're gonna they're gonna live through him and what he does, um, and, and we got to stop him. Um, last he, year he really is about ninety percent of yeah, their effort. Yeah. It's statistically speaking, yeah. and as far as play call is, I mean, they're gonna give him the ball. We know that. They know that. Mm -hmm. um, everybody in the stands know that. And he might even throw it sometimes. Yeah, he likes to throw it. <laughs> they like to throw it with him, and he can throw it. He's got a he can wing it down arm. the field. Yeah, he's got a really good arm. Um, but we got to stop him, and, and that's the game plan. Um, last year he got loose on us one time. Um, and we want to make sure that it doesn't happen because um, once you once he gets going and, and feeling confident, he get, becomes very dangerous. One time you said it. Last year we beat this team fifty nine to eight. Mm -hmm. Fifty nine to eight. Are they much better this year than they were last year? Uh, well, yeah. For I know sure. that's a tough question. It is a tough question. Um, you know, when you look, Coach uh, Bridges is back. Um, so Second year uh -huh. consistency there with the coach. Um, they're they're. Doing the same thing, not not wondering what we're going to be doing or who's going to be here. There's consistency there, and he's done a really good job with those guys. So um, yeah, I, yeah, you can say they're better, um, um, but I think they were really good last year. Uh -huh. You know, I just think that we were able to bottle up Caleb um, and, and make some plays offensively. We've got a pretty good defense. Yeah, we're, we we really do have a really good defense. It's a good matchup for our defense um, as long as we go out and make the plays that we're supposed to make. So um, I expect for it to be a hard-fought game, and I expect for Caleb Kimball to get the ball, and I definitely expect our defense uh -huh. as the coach of the of the of the Trinity County Rockets to go out and stop them. That's, yeah. that's what we have to do this Who's week. Who's that guy? Gage Courtney. Gage Courtney. His responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. You better make it happen. <laughs> Well, he made it happen against this team last year. Yeah, and he does a really good job. Great job, tremendous job. Yeah. And uh, and their quarterback Jerome Warren is is a pretty good athlete himself, and he can throw it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, they have athletes all over the field. Um, it's just Caleb Kimball. He's just so explosive. You know, it's <clears throat> it's hard for him to really spread it around um, evenly with, when you have a guy like that. So um, we we have to watch Watching. some other guys for sure. Well, and you mentioned Xander Tabor uh, a second ago, and he's number 10 in the state in rushing, and I agree with you. I wouldn't trade our running back for their running back for, for no boot in the world, and if he had that many carries, there's no telling where he'd be at right yeah, now. Yeah, Xander is he's an elite running back in, in the state. Um, he's a guy he could start on any team he played for. Um, I, I believe the wholeheartedly in him and his ability, and, you know, he just – he hasn't had the same opportunities as, as a guy like Caleb who's yeah. getting the ball as much as he is. Um, but X um, would, would definitely benefit from having those carries, yeah. for sure. We're going to come back in just a second after this break, and we're going to talk about the Rocket offense and how we prepare for Fulton County. Since 1973, Hodges has been equipping Rockets and Rocket fans with gear and apparel. Come see us! We'll see you here Friday night at the football game. Welcome to Hometown Chiropractic. I'll be right with you. Full Body Fitness training Rockets and Rocket fans since 2006. Here at H&H, &H, we've got just about anything that it takes to get you back out on the field. Hey, Rocket football fans. Let Rommel Ellington tackle your dirty ride. All right, Coach Thompson, let's talk about A Tale of Two Ball Games. How's that? You ever read the book A Tale of Two Cities? Uh, it was, was probably the, required was, reading at one point. Was it about football? <laughs> no. Then I did not read it. <laughs> no, I believe it was somewhere over in England, maybe, in France, Paris. You know, they don't play football over there? <laughs> uh, 
not, not, not the kind of football we play. <laughs> they play a different kind of football. But what I want to talk about is the last two football games. Okay, last week when we played Caverna, we rushed 11 times for 140 yards. 11 carries in the whole game. A record. That's a school record. We've never we've never had that few rushing plays and won a football game. <clears throat> the week before, we were on the cusp of setting a school record for rushing yards, <laughs> 420 some odd yards, yeah. and we were about 60 yards away and probably could have broken it. So <clears throat> that's something that opposing teams, if you're preparing for Creighton County, what do you do? I think that, you know, I I pride myself in in calling our offense a multi set offense. Um, um each week we're gonna look at what the, the defense pre presents us, you know. Um and we're gonna try to attack that each week. So, um you know, this week we'll see how Fulton County comes out and we have a game plan for we'll it. See all. what city shows up. Yeah, right? you know, um we're going to do what's working, and the ultimate goal is to uh, to win the football game, and we've done that the last two weeks in two different ways, but it's all about what you can do each week, mm -hmm. um, what they allow you to do or what they're giving up or where their weaknesses lie, and then you attack those, and, you know, that's what we're going to do this week. Uh, this team, this Fulton County defense this week, they're pretty big up front. Yes. <clears throat> pretty big up front, front, and they're front. athletic in the secondary. Yeah. But it might be a team we can exploit with both, both barrels, maybe. Yeah, I mean, it's like a, we go out with a game plan. We stay simple early, and then we're gonna we'll go after. Um, we'll show some things just to see what they they'll do with it. Um, I'm sure they have a game plan for everything we showed in Trig. I'm sure they have a game plan for everything we showed against Caverna. Um, because those, that's the film that we trade. Um, mm -hmm. So that's what they have. We know for a fact they have those games. I'm sure they have more than that. Um, you know. It is what it is. They're going to line up and do what they're going to do, and we're and we're going to try to make sure that we put ourselves in a position to be successful against that. And by having a multiple set offense where we can do a bunch of different things and come out in a bunch of different offenses, I think that each week that gives us the opportunity to be successful yeah. offensively. And I know that we've had games this year where we struggled a little bit, but um, I, I feel like going into each week we have the opportunity to be successful because we have so much that we do. Mm -hmm. And so much that we do well. Certainly you know. shown a great deal of vers versatility over the last few weeks. All right, we're going to take another quick break. We're going to come back and do our trivia question. T-Bone, good luck this week. Thank you. Good luck this week, Titan. Okay. Boys, we got to know what the game plan is this week. We're banking on you. Through the week, we are welding and fabricating. On Friday nights, we are grinding it out with the Rockets. Touchdown, Rockets! Five regular season home games, at least two home playoff games, at eight touchdowns per, 56 touchdowns, that's a lot of booms. All right, Rocket Football fans, it's that fun time of the show when we talk about the trivia question of the week. And 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 uh, last week was a pretty tough one. I'm not sure anybody ever got it. I'll have to wait and see before I, I post the answer to that one. But this week, we're going to uh, take a trip back in time and include a Fulton County game. This is back in the mid-1990s. Won't give it away by giving you the exact year. But this Hall of Fame Rocket football player set a school record with a 99-yard kickoff return against Fulton County. Tell me who that guy is, or tell them down at H&H &H Home and Hardware who that guy is, and you'll get a free round of golf down at Deer Lakes. Coach, we're going to close out the show today by talking about uh, give us an injury report, if you would, and any sort of personnel changes this week uh, based on those injuries or just uh, anybody uh, maybe moving up to depth chart. Uh, we're, uh, we're healthy um, this week. Um, we do have uh, sickness going around, um, so we'll see where we're at with that. Um, you know, Cooksey had the pneumonia. Um, 
And, and has he been practicing this he week? He has practiced a little bit this week, but we don't want to push it, especially the air getting cold. We don't. We just want to be careful with him, and and then Turley is fighting some sickness. Preston. Yeah. Um, so we'll see where he's at um, come Friday. Um, and Noah Perkins is also um, fighting some sickness, so we'll see where those guys are at. But other than that, as far as injuries, all the injuries we've had, um, those guys have come. I think we've gotten everybody back except for Bryson Baker, who was injured earlier in the season. Um, even um, Isaac Sorrells got cleared this week to play with his uh, – cast so um and, you know we're getting guys back at the right time um ian's back deacon's back um you know, right. full compliment then to yeah, go down to full yeah, County, just what sure. we need for sure and i'm sure that those those guys they're probably not a hundred percent but you know i don't think anybody's a hundred percent at this point in the year um if, if they're not they're not playing like those guys play yeah you know or if they are they're not playing right. like those guys play so um, you know, it's nice to be able to, to have all our guys ready to go, um, and hopefully they, they come out on Friday and stay healthy. So. You know, you mentioned uh, Noah Perkins. He's somebody I don't think maybe we uh, tip our cap to enough. Yeah. He, uh, he's almost automatic uh, on, on PATs, and in yeah. fact, he right now, uh, for his career, he has the highest PAT for a current for a career mm -hmm. uh, percent highest percentage of any kicker. Now he's got to finish out his career yeah. for that to be a record, yeah. but you know uh, it's pretty good. Cody yeah. Cody Belt I think was uh, 90 91 percent, yeah. and maybe uh, Noah's at 93 some odd now. Yeah. But uh, all that's available on the Cricket Press website. You can go look at all those yeah. statistics that Andy Hunt prepares for us every week. It's on uh, on the football uh, side. Yeah. It's really just the the work he puts in. Um, he kicks a lot, especially in the offseason. He was kicking um, a lot early in the summer, you know, just going out there with his brother mm -hmm. and, and Parker Johnson and, and just kicking. Um, so he, he, he knows his leg. Um, he knows when he misses – Two inches this way, how to move it four inches to the left, you know. Um, Just missed a, what, a 38 yard, yeah. 37, 38 yard attempt. Yeah, and it was. Uh, yeah. Hit the pole. Yeah. Come it, back in. It was he was just tad off right there, but it was more than, you know, the timing was off a little bit right there. Um, he's a guy we trust to be able to to kick a field goal when we go out there. So um, I know he gets on himself when he, met, when he has a miss like that, but, you know, um, we trust him. That's why we kicked it. Um, and he's also a guy that plays free safety for Pretty good defense. Um, and, and has been really good. You know, we talked early in the year about his size. Is that, a, is that a weakness in the middle? It hasn't showed up all year as being a weakness. Um, you know, he's just where he's supposed to be. He makes the plays. Mm -hmm. So um, he's a guy that's been good and consistent for us, both in the kicking game and, as well as um, on defense. You know, and I, I, I want to go back and to something in last week's game. I'll tell you, a guy who came in, he's not a very big guy, but uh, Seth Getz made a couple of tackles on some big guys. Yeah. I mean, he just takes their legs out from yeah. under him. Yeah, Seth is confident in, in what he's doing when he's on the field, especially on the defensive side of the mm -hmm. ball, and he's not afraid of anything. You know, he does what he's taught to do. Um, why, why would someone of his size go high against right. someone of that quarterback? That quarterback was a big guy, and, and so <laughs> Seth did what exactly what he's coached to do, and I think 17 is probably still with him, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, and that's good. You want your young guys to come in sure. and, and play against varsity players and be able to make those plays. So um, I, was, I was very impressed with that. And, it's, you know, Seth's been doing that all year in the yeah. JV game, so we know he's capable. But sometimes when you get out there on Friday, it's a little bit different, different caliber uh, of complete arsenal on the mm -hmm. opposite team. And, and, you know, he just stepped in there and made the plays like he'd been doing all year. And that whole that whole reserve unit uh, mm -hmm. holds Caverna, a varsity yeah. football yeah. team, scoreless for, yeah. for a half. Yeah, varsity football Shout out team, to those they've guys. been scoring. Yeah, they've been scoring on other teams, especially early in games. They're going down and scoring touchdowns. And for our guys to come in and and, make, and keep the zero on the board, you know, that that's what – we want to be that team, you know. We, we strive to be a team that can hold shutouts and then also have your young guys be able to go and move the ball. Um, and they did that. They were very efficient offensively, and, and they held on to the zero defensively. So I was really impressed with them. Um, I, I like that time. I like those guys to be able to get in there and show um, that, that they can do it because now, you, as a coach, you start trusting those guys. Um, it's like Luke Mundy going in. Yeah. Um, 
and starting the game defensively. He gets a tackle for a loss and a sack and, a, and a, another tackle just in his that first series. Um, and, but it's stuff he had been doing in the JV game all season, yeah. and JV games all season. So um, now <clears throat> you see him do it on a Friday night, and you know you get confident in him. So you just got deeper. You yeah, got, you just got deeper. And at the end of the year, Class A teams, you know the numbers aren't there. Right. Um, and you start getting beat up, your numbers are decreasing. Well, we're we're increasing at the number of people we can play on a Friday night. Had a so, pretty good JV game this week. Yeah, for sure. They, uh, yeah, the one we got to bring the eighth graders up, um, play freshman sophomore, um, and, and they go out and they put on put up a lot of points, um, and they put up a lot of points fast. So that's, I'm excited <laughs> about the future um, there, especially on the offensive side of the mm -hmm. ball. There's so many playmakers at that age, and then you think that. There were so many playmakers that didn't even play in that game that could have been there. Yeah. And it's just so much. There's, there's guys running all over the place. I'm excited about Rocket football top to bottom. You can go on every team that we have and see playmakers. So um, to, to sit here and, and be waiting for those guys, um, it's easy to do because you know they're coming. So It's a good feeling to have. Oh, for it? sure, for sure, for sure. All right, well, we're going to get back to the future here real quick. We go down to Fulton County on Friday night and have an opportunity to go 2-0 in the district and solidify a, chance, a home field advantage for the first two rounds. Of the, well, certainly the first round of the playoff and perhaps uh, the next two because we've got to take care of business against Russell yeah. next week. But uh, district game number two on tap down at Fulton County. Friday night. We'll see you down there. Kickoff 7 p.m. Everything in this country was built from the ground up and it starts with land. When I can go out and take somebody onto a property and see that and that gleam in their eye when they find a farm that, that, that they fall in love with because they're as passionate about land as I am, that's when the magic happens. That's what makes what we do so great. It's and in there's no dollar amount. There's nothing else that can compare to the look you get when somebody signs on that dotted line and their dreams have come true about owning land. 